Hello everybody, this is Niklas Hoschmidt and welcome to this game analysis. In this video I'm going to analyze the game between Vladimir Kramnik and Pantala Hare Krishna from Shamkir Chess 2017 and it was truly an amazing game so let's get right into it. Kramnik with the white pieces starting maybe a little bit unusual for him starting with 1 e4 but recently Kramnik has played this move more often to switch it up a little bit and maybe also play some other positions than the usual Catalan and D4 stuff. But actually Kramnik he has very quite a lot and he plays a lot of different openings these days. So how Krishna is replying with the Ra Lopez we see here and we follow the main line and now Kramnik decides to go for 6 D3. The main move is Rook E1 but 6 D3 has become quite popular in the recent years because the white players are looking for different ways to pose problems for black. So d3, b5, bishop b3, d6. Now it is a position of threat of black threatening to go knight a5 and splitting the white bishop pair by taking on b3. So white has to create some space for the bishop and he could go c3 but the other way to do it and that's what Kramnik did is to go a3. And the point behind this is it's allowing white to still develop the knight to c3. Now black plays a very typical maneuver here, plays knight b8 because the knight on c6 is really without perspective and knight b8 enables him to go c5, get a better grip on the center and develop the knight to d7 and so forth. Now the knight moved back also took out the, the venom out of this potential idea knight d5 which is often in the air. So now Kramnik plays a different plan, he plays knight e2. Very typical to maneuver this knight to g3. Usually it takes a different route, usually it's knight b1 to d2 and then to f1 of course after, rook, after rook has moved and then go to g3. Because on g3 the knight is really well placed and why is that the case? Well the knight is out of the way for c3 to happen so white can support the center and then the knight is protecting the pawn on e4 which is important because you need to have this pawn protected before you play d4 and also in some cases as we'll see in the game the knight is able to jump to f5 and create some threats there against the black king or create some difficulties for black on the king side. Now black went c5, very typical, rook e1, rook c8 and rook c8 has the idea to go c4 next move. And it's interesting here, Kramnik just ignores that. He just goes knight f5 nonetheless. He could have just gone bishop a2 here because now if black goes c4, white could just reply with d4 and, and have this nice strong center. So that was a different option. Also bishop c2 is possible, but I think I would have gone with bishop a2 here to keep this bishop on this nice long diagonal. But Kramnik goes knight f5 and now black plays c4 and here the difference is now you have to react. You cannot go d4 obviously as the white bishop on b3 is hanging. So white takes and now black doesn't take back in fact. After which white could just retreat to c2 and would have some nice play against the pawn on d6. But now white takes the center pawn on e4 and attacks the knight on f5. So white takes on e7, check. Queen takes back, takes pawn here, takes pawn here. And let's stop for a moment. So apparently Kramnik wanted to achieve this position. I'm not quite sure why, because here he exchanged a center pawn, his pawn on e4, for a pawn on the edge of the board, right? You could say for the a6 pawn more or less, for the b5 pawn. On the other hand, he has the bishop pair. So maybe this is what attracted him to this variation, but the center for black is worth a lot because if you have the center, you have more space and you, you're better able to, to move your pieces freely. So it is quite important. And I think black's completely fine here. I would actually prefer black. So Kramnik plays bishop g5, developing his last minor piece. Now knight c5 attacking, or once again, having this positional threat of splitting the bishop pair. So Kramnik removes the bishop, plays back to a2, h6, and now bishop h4. He could have taken on f6, but that was not his idea. He wanted to have the bishop pair. Bishop h4, and now Hare Krishna plays aggressively, and rightfully so, eight, uh, g7 to g5. Bishop is driven back further, 
goes to g3. And now bishop h7, another good move by black, preparing knight f to e4 and an onslaught here with the black pawns on the king side. Kramnik goes queen e2. And now just a quiet move for now, king g7, just to improve the position, position of the king for now. And white cannot take on b5. If he takes on b5, then black just plays knight d3, attacks the rook, let's say rook e2, and then follows up with rook b8, and the pawn on b2 will drop, and those pawns will be quite weak, so that's no good for white. Crown played rook a d1, and that's, well, it leads to very interesting positions, let's put it like that. He could have played differently here with knight d4, and what I like about this move is that it enables white to go f3 and then bring the bishop back here because the bishop is not doing anything on g3, it's just biting on this pawn on e5. And obviously black cannot take because his queen on d e7 is unprotected. But Kramnik had something different in mind. He played rook ad1, knight f to e4, as it was black's plan. And now Kramnik plays this odd move, rook d5. And you're like wondering, what, is, what does he want to do here? Okay, because it seems like the rook is not doing anything there. White could double on the default, but then what? The pawn on d6 is protected anyway. And now how Krishna continues with his natural plan. He goes f5 and he's like, okay, what are you going to do now? I'm threatening f4. And obviously you don't want to play h3 because then black could either take on g3 and white's pawn structure is ruined or go f4 and the bishop is locked in on h2. But Kramnik had this very interesting idea and that's, that's what makes this game quite special, I think. Here, Kramnik is just sacrificing a rook, a full rook, for two pawns only by playing rook takes e5 and that was his whole idea behind rook d5 so it was kind of a prophylactic move what a prophylactic what kind of prophylactic move is that incredible rook takes e5 pawn takes obviously and now bishop takes e5 check and now you suddenly see why kramnik want to have this bishop pair because he likes to have these shining bishops here along the long diagonal but okay he just invests a whole, whole rook so he Got, better got to have something here. Now Hare Krishna played knight of six, and I think that's an inaccuracy. I, well, I, I checked this game with the computer, so I should rather say the computer thinks this is an inaccuracy. He should have gone king g6, which looks strange at first, and probably he was worried about bishop d4, freeing up the e5 square for the knight, which is now quite an uncomfortable threat, but black is just in time to go bishop g8 and prepare moving back to h7. And white should keep the bishop here, go bishop b1, and now king h7. And I think this is a better version for black because he's not in a pin. Still, white has compensation, no question about it. But black should be better here, even though in the practical game anything can happen, obviously. So back to the game. Hare Krishna played knight f6. Now queen takes b5, so white has gotten three pawns for the rook. And he has this monster on e5. So black, uh, white definitely has compensation. But objectively speaking, it shouldn't be enough. But in a practical game, it's quite different. And it kind of reminds me of a former world champion, Mial Tal, who liked to have these speculative sacrifices, counting on the practic practical game. And that will be difficult for the opponent to play the position. I think that's what Kramnik did here. And maybe also a little bit out of the... The requirements of the situation because his position was kind of getting a little bit difficult so he completely switched it around and now it's on black to be on the defensive side now how krishna plays knight c4 a good move blocking the e-file bishop to d4 and the bishop is just perfectly placed here looking at the king side and he is protected rook f d8 h3 Rook b8, queen e2, and now bishop g8, and that's another inaccuracy. Black should go rook e8, but let's be clear. White obviously has compensation here, and it feels like it's easier to play for white, even though, objectively speaking, black should be better here. But we are no computers, so 
it is quite a different story for a human. Bishop g8 trying to exchange the bishop, but Kramnik just calmly moves it back to b1. Now queen b7, b4, very obvious move. And that's what I'm saying. The moves for white come very natural. You just move the bishop away, play the pawn forward. It was attacked, right? It's all very simple. Rook e8, now c4, play another pawn forward, prepare queen b2, putting on more pressure on the long diagonal. And here, Hare Krishna goes wrong. He played queen c6. Instead, he should have done it a little bit differently, go queen a6 and attack the two pawns this way. Because the difference now is after queen b2, he can take with the bishop on c4 when knight e5 is not hitting bishop and queen as it would in the game. And here black can go king h7 and position remains quite unclear. Black still is better according to the computer. White also has another option here, which I found quite interesting. It's the move b5. Maybe that's what uh, High Krishna didn't like. Now queen takes a3. And now there's this interesting line. Bishop takes e4, rook takes, queen d2. And despite the fact that a lot of pieces are coming off, white still has very good compensation here with the two connected pawns and with the pressure along the long diagonal, now threatening queen e5 or bishop takes f6. So all quite unclear still. After queen c6 in the game, the black advantage is gone and white has more than enough compensation already. Kramnik goes queen b2. And now the difference is after bishop takes c4, white can go knight e5, hit the queen and the bishop. And after queen moves, white can take on e4 and make use of this pin on the long diagonal. If f takes e4, then knight d7, putting on more pressure on the knight on f6 and taking the next move. And if instead of f takes e4 here, knight takes e4, white obviously just plays a discovered check, wins the bishop, and is only in exchange down against an open weak king of black. And also white has two pawns. So this is quite good for white already. Now in the game, Black played rook bd8, now c5, another simple move, pawn attacked, let's move it forward. Queen e6, keep on moving, b5, and here Hare Krishna plays the decisive mistake. He goes king f8, a natural move to go out of this pin finally, right? but then his position is lost. He should have played queen b3, but white doesn't exchange queens, keeps the tension, queen a1. And also this position, a computer might hold it, but for a human, it's incredibly difficult. You have to face these two pawns, connected pawns. You still have this weak king as the whole time already, and you have no way to alleviate the pressure. So very difficult position, I think, to play in a practical game. All right, let's see how this continues. King of eight, now c6, just keep on pushing. And Hare Krishna tries dash desperate measures. He was also down on time, but this position, what can you do? I mean, it's just no way to create any play. So he tries with g4, but it just backfires. Takes, takes, and bishop takes e4. G takes f3 and bishop takes f6. And white has already won a piece. He's only down in exchange now and doing material-wise already great. And then adding on top of that, of course, the black king is horribly weak as well. So the rest was easy for Kramnik. Rook d6, and now he gave one check on g7. King to f7, and now he played a nice little finishing move here. Bishop e5, and Hare Krishna resigned because well, he cannot take the bishop. Then white plays bishop g6 check. That's why he first prompted the king to go to f7, so that this check is possible. Rook takes, rook takes e5. Black can give one revenge check, but after king f1, it's nothing to do. White is up a queen and has two pawns here which are also about to queen, so this is game over. And what else can you do in this position? Rook dd8, move it back, but white just takes on f3. I mean, what to do here, bishop h5. <laughs> this is just all, all horrible. I mean, probably you could take away again one of white's pieces. Let's say the bishop on f3 and still position would be uh, quite good for white, potentially. Okay, anyway, so how Krishna resigned at this point and Kramnik wins a really nice game. 
what if the rock sacrifice i haven't seen this before where you just sacrifice a rock for two pawns and it's really this long-term kind of compensation for one the black had a really difficult game to play from that point forward because it's difficult to create counterplay and to be active and there are always these threats and he has to play against a strong bishop on d4 and for the other he realized that the trend of the game was going against him so he decided okay i have to take some drastic measure to turn around that's what he did and worked out beautifully so amazing game by kramnik i hope you enjoyed this analysis and if you did feel free to subscribe to my channel to be notified when i publish future analysis like this one all right see you guys next time bye bye